1952 signals the beginning of Desilu's expansion. Desilu adapts the popular CBS radio show Our Miss Brooks to television. In her Emmy award-winning role, Eve Arden plays Connie Brooks, a wise-cracking English teacher, and Richard Crenna plays the dim-witted Walter Denton. Gail Gordon also stars as the blustery Mr. Conklin. He doesn't like to cook at my place. <laughs> Mother sent Daddy and me over there to buy a home freezer, but Daddy figures it's cheaper if we take our meat. On your horse! <laughs> What's in the basket, Miss Garza? My lunch. <laughs> now then, Miss Brooks, it is with considerable horror that I recall the last time you pinch hit for our custodian. You repaired some doorknobs, remember? Did I remember. Every time you went to open a door, the knob came away in your hand and you fell flat. What? <laughs> Miss Brooks runs from 1952 to 1956 and becomes one of television's most popular and loved sitcoms. Desilu's boom prompts them to move and purchase Hollywood's Motion Picture Center Studios, a larger production facility. Shortly after, Desi and Lucy are honored on Ed Sullivan's Toast of the Town. Now then, there's another character in our show. His name escapes me at the moment. <laughs> who seems to be in all places at once, making like an actor, a banker, a politician, in short, a producer, gets my vote as the greatest producer of all time. And I have two little Arnazes at home to prove it. <laughs> Jesse, I love you. Signed, Lucy. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, Ed. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I think if it wouldn't have been for Lucy, I would have stopped crying a long time ago because I was always the guy that didn't fit. <laughs> when she did my favorite husband on the radio, they said that I wasn't the type to play the part. <laughs> then finally, she wanted to do the television show, and she says, well, I want to do it with Desi. So everybody again said, well, he doesn't... He's not right to play your husband. Finally, one executive at CBS said, well, maybe the audience would buy him, because after all, they have been married for 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> and you know something, though, that I really want to tell you tonight? What Tess Tex O'Rourke said about my first job in this country was cleaning bird cages. It's very true. We came to this country and we didn't have a cent in our pockets. From cleaning canary cages to this night here in New York, it's a long ways. And I don't think there's any other country in the world that could give you that opportunity. I want to say thank you. Thank you, America. Thank you. take time out for a movie with MGM and enjoy the greatest motion picture success of their careers. Their second film at MGM is produced by Desi and filmed at Desilu. And in the television world with I Love Lucy and Our Miss Brooks as its mainstay, nothing can impede the growth of Desilu Studios and its ever-expanding production agenda. Desilu's groundbreaking approach to filming half-hour comedy series and its state-of-the-art production facilities attracts the attention of Hollywood's most outstanding creative talents. And the Desilu lot is soon host to scores of sitcoms and dramatic productions. It was the equivalent of a major, a major studio. I think that's what Desi had always had in his mind to build. In addition to I Love Lucy and Our Miss Brooks, Desi Lou produces several other highly successful shows. Some of the Desi Lou shows are Miss Brooks, December Bride, U.S. Marshals, Whirly Birds. All of these types of shows were shot at all the different facilities. December Bride runs from 1954 to 1961 and is Desi Arnaz's second most successful series. It still ranks in the top 100 TV series of all time. Ah, uh, being a mother.
mother-in-law can be just delightful. I'm Spring Byington, and is Lily Ruskin December Bride? Oh, dear, what are they squabbling about? The other side of the story does crop up, as with Pete. I don't have to go anywhere to see monsters. I got my wife's mother to look at. Well, when you're a December bride with April ideas, you're pretty busy with your own plans. He's giving me a dollar too much. Uh, oh, don't bother. Just put it on top of the register and let's go. Oh, well, I better put it inside so that... <laughs> All right, sister, stay right where you are. So much for April ideas, but it's all for fun. I hope you'll share it with us on December Bride each weekday. Dizzy Lou's The Ann Southern Show runs until 1961, an offspring of their 1953 sitcom, Private Secretary. Starring Ann Southern herself, it becomes another Dizzy Lou hit. be the most successful assistant manager in the hotel business. You should see how her boss relies on her. In fact... I have a confession to make. Yes. Well, it's just that I... Well, what I mean to say is... Katie, I don't know how I'm going to get along without you. You've been my right arm in everything. Policy, decisions, everything. And now let's see that right arm in action. Get her. It isn't sweet enough. From Jekyll to Hyde with one cup of coffee. Better. Well, all three of these are on the menu at the Barclay House. From 1956 to 1959, Desi Lu also produces the high-flying, high-tech hit series Whirly Birds. Whirly Birds stars Ken Toby as Chuck and Craig Hill as P.T. Pilot partners hired out for all types of adventurous jobs. The Sheriff of Cochise is another popular hit show produced by Desi Lu. John Bromfield plays a fist-fighting lawman from Cochise, Arizona, whose duty it is to clean up the state. The Sheriff of Cochise runs from 1956 to 1960. In 1956, CBS offered to buy all right title and interest to I Love Lucy. And they were willing to pay Lucy and Desi, who owned... 100% of the show at that time, $5 million in cash, which was an unheard of sum. In 1956, $5 million was an awful lot of money, probably about 20 to 30 times what it is today. And so Desi took the $5 million, and then he thought, what are we going to do with this money? How is this company going to grow? Where do we go from I Love Lucy? And he was thoroughly convinced that in order to grow, he had to buy major studio, RKO executives, offered Desi Liu and Desi Arnaz the right to buy RKO for $5,150,000. So Desi said to Lucy, honey, we want to buy RKO studio with our $5 million that we just sold. I love Lucy to see this one. And Lucy said, are you crazy? It's every nickel we have in this world. But Desi, how... Why would we do that? We don't know anything about running a studio. We said we have good people. We think we can make that $5 million grow and become successful. And after great hesitation and somewhat reluctant, but always trusting Desi's business judge, she said, okay, honey, if you think it's going to work, let's do it. And with that final okay, he went ahead and bought our camp. Desi Arnaz was just a naturally astute and far-sighted businessman and he had such unlimited confidence in his own ability that he was willing to go ahead and do things lawyers who are by nature I think somewhat cautious would point out risks and possible jeopardies that might be involved and Desi would understand them but invariably Desi would rely on his own judgment as to whether a certain business risk should or shouldn't be taken. And invariably, he proved to be right. On November 26, 1957, a major event happened in the history of Desilu. Desilu, which started out as a small cottage family industry, uh, turned into a major studio 
with television and film productions at this time with the acquisition of RKO Studios and Pictures by Desilu. Now this is a major event in Hollywood. I mean, RKO was a major studio. A studio that made films like King Kong and uh, Citizen Kane, can you imagine, and, and uh, uh, Fred Astaire dancing pictures. I mean, th we're talking big studios, we're talking big stars, we're talking scripts and sh TV shows, all kinds of things that RKO was developing. And uh, this was the time that uh, they could not pass up such an opportunity. It was uh, an incredible feeling to walk back at the end of production that night, uh, which was maybe six or seven o'clock, uh, with Desi and Argyle and myself, and I think we had a bottle of champagne or something, and we toasted uh, the new owners of RKO Studios. 22 years after her arrival as a bit player at RKO, Lucille Ball has arrived once more. This time, she owns the studio.